Hi everybody, this is Mark and Holly from Jansen Photo Expeditions. How's it going today, Holly? I think we're doing pretty well. We're getting ready for our next trip to beautiful, amazing Iceland. Yeah, really excited about Iceland this year. Um, this will be our fifth year going to Iceland and we're really excited about it. Um, but I wanted to mention, um, before we start talking about camera gear and how to capture the aurora, and that's what today's about, there was something else I wanted to mention. Photographing the aurora borealis in Iceland can be exciting and challenging for the beginner and the advanced photographer alike. Yeah, but the main thing you want to remember when you go to Iceland is, as sure you're getting ready with all your gear and stuff, but when you see this phenomenon, phenomenon for the first time, you want to take your time to enjoy it. Don't get so wrapped up and buried in your camera right away. Just sit back and kind of let the whole thing kind of happen. Just experience the magic. You know, take a few minutes to watch the colorful lights dance and whip around before you. It's a, an amazing experience that you can remember in your mind's eye as well as in your photographs. Yes. So what we're going to do today is move on to a few little uh, tips that, uh, that Holly and I, well, that we've, over the years, that we've found in capturing it work the best. Um, there are a number of ways you can capture the aurora, but we find for the beginner or the person just getting into it, this works the best. First, you'll need a solid tripod. Don't have a flimsy one. Make sure it's solid and uh, you have a, a ball head, and a ball head so you can actually change angles pretty quickly. It's also important to have a, a remote wired shutter release. You don't want to be pushing your camera's shutter button by hand. And you'll also have to have lenses that are um, very light sensitive. What I mean is a fast lens, a, a 1.4 or a 2.8. And make sure it's a wide angle lens. Anywhere from, let's say, uh, 14 to 24 millimeter work really well. And the camera should be a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Sorry, but the cell phones just don't work in this instance. Yeah, the cell phones just don't have the capability for gathering um, the light that, you, that a SLR or a, um, a, a mirrorless camera will have. So the first thing you want to do uh, is to locate your lens's infinity mark. The best way to do this is to, in daylight hours, is to uh, set your camera at its widest aperture, which would be either 1.8 or, or 2.8. Uh, 2 um, at a far distance object, um, then focus on it, lock it, and then um, mark where that that measurement is. So when you're out in the darkness, you actually know where your infinity mark is. So you get the stars in focus, and also the uh, any kind of distant foreground object you have. So they'll be relatively uh, in focus for your exposure. Of course, you'll want to uh, consider your ISO also. And not, um, of course, not to mention um, shooting your camera on manual. That way you have control over all your settings on your camera separately. Uh, Usually it's, a, it's suggested to start at about an 800 ISO and then maxing out at about 2500 ISO. But that also depends upon your camera. Yes. And um, like I mentioned earlier, um, you want that wide angle lens. And that's really important because you want to be catching as much sky as possible, as much foreground as possible. And the trick is, of course, is to keep your aperture wide open so that it can gather as much light as possible. Uh, longer exposures are essential for capturing the aurora borealis. Exposure times between 5 seconds at higher ISO settings with wide open apertures all the way to from 20 to 40 seconds. I've captured at various settings. My best results using my full frame uh, camera, my Nikon camera now, are ISO 800 using a 2.8 lens with a, my 14 to 24 lens at 20 seconds. And it's, uh, it's always important to have spare camera batteries on hand. If you're out shooting in cold conditions, which it usually is in Iceland oh, in the middle of the night, uh, keep your batteries in a warm inner pocket. Uh, bring a good headlamp with an infrared light setting option. Uh, this will prevent night blindness. Yeah, it's really essential when you're working with a crowd of people to be respectful of everybody. And we found, uh, especially on our workshops, um, since we're small, we're a small group, we can operate as a team, so everyone can be watching what the other person's doing, and we can also, okay, um, lights off, everybody, you know, headlamps off, exposure, so you get kind of a, um, things start working in unison a little bit, and there's, it's just more, more successful 
when you're working like that. When you're working with different groups in a big given area, it can get kind of um, it can get kind of um, testy sometimes. But normally, when we're shooting in Iceland, we're in some remote areas and we're mostly by ourselves. It's important to experiment with some different exposure settings while you're out there. All cameras are different. Expect to be fussing around a bit in the dark at first. It's always good to test your settings first and get a feel for working with your camera in the dark. Know your camera's button locations and menus. These are critical points when you're out in the dark shooting. If you've never done night photography before, playing in the dark at home, where it doesn't count, is a good way to learn. And when the action starts, you'll want clear skies for the most part. Sure, you can have some wispy clouds, but clear skies will give you a, a great aurora. Sync a good landscape to construct your composition. Total late pre-dawn -dark, pre darkness is best while exploring optimum locations for your photography. As far as moon phases are concerned, I found waxing or waning crescents are great for illuminating foregrounds, especially with strong foreground features found in Iceland. That would include waterfalls and uh, volcanoes and, and a lot of uh, you know, expansive landscapes. Sometimes the aurora can be elusive. And there have been nights where we've gone out, out looking for the aurora and we didn't actually capture it with our naked eye. But there was, we, we kind of had, we were suspicious that it might be there. So a good thing to do is, is to set up your camera, put it on a long exposure, if you think there might be an aurora happening, and test it. And you'll notice that the colors of the aurora will come out on your camera before you can see it with your naked, naked eye. You will most likely notice a faint green hue on the horizon with your naked eyes, and pinks if the strength continues of the aurora. Always consult your histogram and make adjustments as you go. Remember, if you want star trails, any exposure time over 30 seconds will provide this. If you want static stars, a, 30, a 20 second exposure will do, but you'll need to raise your ISO a bit to do this. But most importantly, be sure you take the time to, to enjoy the experience and enjoy Iceland. Yes, the Aurora is a once-in-a-lifetime experience for many, and you don't want to miss it, because when you go down the road in a few years, the memory of, the, of this experience will be the one in your mind, not the one in your camera. So if you're interested in, in joining us on one of our future Iceland expeditions, go to our website at jansenphotoexpeditions.com and navigate to our Iceland page. We have Iceland workshops uh, in, the, in the winter where we're experiencing the aurora and we also are going to be doing uh, summer trips as well. Have a great day and enjoy your photography. That's jansenphotoexpeditions.com.